Hello, friends. Welcome to the JV Show. This is Jorge. And this is Viv. And uh, welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Uh, start of summer. I guess summer started like a week or two ago. Woohoo. With, um, what is it called? Is it like the summer solstice or something? Yeah, it was on the 21st, right? Yeah, I think. That's Joyce's B Day. But um, it's also when the Fire Nation attacked, is it? The- Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I think, no, the Fire Nation gets the strongest on the summer solstice. Well, I don't even remember anymore. From the last half. I think they're making a new one. Wait. No, I could be wrong. Did they make a live action yet? No, no. I I, I hope, I pray that the creators are moral enough to not stoop to that level. That's true. I feel like there's no live action out there that actually looks good. But I've seen some CGI created live action-esque Oh, wait. Things of Naruto and Avatar. And they look so fucking sick. But they're obviously like fan base made. Wait, I think there is the last Airbender the uh, live action one. It was like almost 10 years ago, actually. Oh, no, this is this TV series. I'm pretty sure there was. Um, and I'm pretty sure no one liked it. Avatar, the last Airbender most, live yeah, action. Most live actions. The Airbender. Oh, it merges in 2024. Oh. Okay, so they haven't yet, but they're planning to. Oh, is he going to be a Chinese kid? I hope he's a Chinese kid. Damn it. Okay, if if you were to, like... Okay, let's let's, let's be a little racist here. If you were thinking about the races, what do you think each uh, geographical area would kind of result in? Okay, so, like, I think the Water Nation people are, like, Inuit? natives. Like, yeah. like into yeah. it and stuff, right? Because they live there. It's into it? Or... Are you, that's the sorry, that's sorry. A company, right? It's Inuit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, you're right. In, yeah, yeah, it's Inuit. For some reason, I was combining both I- Inuit and was it is it I- is it Iqaluit? Is is that one? Oh no, that's a city. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, no, guys, I'm I'm butchering this. So I I would imagine the Water Nation people would be native. I agree. Um, I would kind of imagine the Earth Nation people to be african because there's like a lot of deserts around uh, where they are yeah like the sahara Der- desert is kind of what comes to mind when i think about that stuff and See that's in Fire africa Nation as like mongolian or china yeah yeah yeah. because uh the the architecture yeah. of their buildings are very like chinese with the pagoda looking buildings and stuff and then i think like i i guess the the airbenders are kind of like maybe the white people but also they have a lot of monks right and i kind of mm-hmm. associate like chinese people with monk also and asians i guess yeah i don't know what i would do air airbenders for that, that that's the only way i can associate is like you know there's a lot of temples and stuff and you know a lot of temples in asia but at the same time they're very like pale skinned though like they're all super pale skinned Oh, you know in Marvel where Doctor Strange goes to learn his powers? Mm. It's probably there. Tibet. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah, no. But yeah, that's what I would think of it. If it was like analogous or analogous to our real world. But anyways, how was your week, babe? Uh, my week's been pretty good. I let's see. I'm gonna go back to what did I do last week. I didn't. Okay, I had a video call with some of my female cousins on my dad's side because one of my cousins just gave birth like two weeks ago. Whoa! Yeah, pretty exciting. Is or the baby's name is Ewan. Hmm. I couldn't tell how to... Pr- I thought it was pronounced completely differently when I saw the spelling. How's it spelled? It's, how do you think it's spelled? Ewan is the... Yeah, Ewan. Ewan. Um, I was thinking something like E-U-A-N or something like that, or E-U-I-N or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's E-W-A-N. So when she oh, first wrote that, I was that like... Ewan? <laughs> yeah. I was like, is that... Are you sure it's not Evan, but like, you know, with a list or some speech <laughs> impediment Edwin? type of thing? Ewan. 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 <laughs> So then they pronounce it. I went, I went. Yeah, I'm sure that's Ewan. Ewan McGregor. He's a famous guy. Where is it's the same as this, right? Yeah, exactly the same spelling. But she pronounced it as Ewan. Wait, Ewan? should we Ewan? should we see Ewan? how YouTube Ewan. says it? 
Oh, wait. I don't have my sound. Um, okay, wait. Go on with your story while I figure this out. And the baby was really, really cute. And it was really nice just to be able to chat with my female cousins and talk. And I guess a part of the reason why we were having a or we scheduled like a girls chat night on video call was because all our guy cousins were in Montreal for the week for a bachelor party. One of my cousins late bachelor parties. But yeah, that was a really nice call to catch up with my cousins. Okay, I, I feel like Montreal is a little overrated for that stuff. Like, it's it's good for if you're only there for a weekend or something like that. But there's not much to do after that. Is what I feel like for a bachelor never party. Been. Uh, aside from that, I think everything's been pretty normal lately. I have made really good progress or progress that I'm happy with in volleyball. Where I've been trying to fix my footing for the last while. And I think I'm starting to actually get the hang of it to the point where it doesn't feel awkward and it feels a little bit more natural than not now. Mm, nice. To use like proper footing when I do my approach and everything. Damn, that's good. Yeah, i been really <clears throat> proud of that. Do you guys go practice every week, Phil? Uh, on Tuesdays. It's been like consistent every single week? Yes, I missed one week because uh-huh. I went to go watch The Little Mermaid with just Liz but aside from that I've been going every single Tuesday wait how was the Little Mermaid it was ass <laughs> like it it brought back a lot of nostalgia obviously because it's the same storyline but the actors were so bad that it made me feel like I could become an actress easily I could have easily been starred in this movie just because of the acting alone wait was Ursula hot no Ursula <laughs> was um, Ursula was Melissa McCarthy Ursula. Sorry, Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy. Let's go. She was in not RoboCop, but she's in a lot of comedies. <laughs> mm. Damn, they should have made her hot. They could have. I mean, her mermaid form or her human form was pretty hot. Oh. Um. <clears throat> yeah, the movie was kind of bad. That's what I expect. I did watch Fast and Furious. But I haven't watched that yet. So it came out while I was in, on vacation. So I was like, it's already been out for like three weeks. So I was like, I don't want to go to the theater for this now. It's kind of like, you want to go to theater? Watch it online already. Oh, really? Yeah, like, you can tour in it. Oh, damn. Okay. I think that's what I, I'll probably do this weekend. <laughs> it's not bad, but the whole time, you know how most... Okay, obviously, as it as the Fast and Furious series goes down the line... It becomes less about <clears throat> less about cars, less about racing. It becomes a lot yeah. more dramatic, a lot more unrealistic and like fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. But this one was completely. I think there was only like one or two races that were actually that actually seemed like a street race, which is I think what Fast and Furious is kind of based off of. Yeah. And they didn't focus on any nice cars. Like I think the only highlight uh, car was a golden Ferrari or yeah. not Ferrari, a golden Lambo. Yeah, yeah. But that's. That's nothing. I think Lambos are kind of ugly. And the entire time, it was just Dom basically trying to survive and run away from the antagonist. Oh. The antagonist just kept like one upping him, one upping him, and being like, "Oh, but I got this under my sleeve. Oh, uh. but there's this. Oh, but there's a bomb over here. Oh, but there's this over here." And he just survived the whole time. It's like, but wait, he didn't he get anything back? And it just ended off a cliffhanger. That's it. But wait, here's my trap card. But yeah, basically, <clears> that's <throat> the entire movie. He just kept running and running and just trying to save his ass. I think they kind of, like, they had an oversight where they didn't really, like, take the series seriously early mm-hmm. enough. Like, once you blow up a submarine, like, you can't just go back to street racing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think they fucked it up there where, like, they got it too dramatic too fast. So they couldn't extend it to, like, 10 movies. I right? think so. So, like, I always thought, I truly thought that they were going to end it like end it at fast x like they're gonna fucking shave everyone's head so everyone's bald and then race the fuck (laughs) out of them and then kill them all or something like that where they're like the story's ended and then two years later they're gonna do like a reboot i was like that's gonna be the most genius move because everyone's gonna be like oh my god it's the nostalgia i have to go back and watch this kind of thing that's kind of what i thought they were gonna do like could you imagine the entire plot of like the first have you watched the first Fast and Furious? I've watched all of it. Yeah. So could you imagine the entire plot of first 
first Fast and Furious, but they actually have like cell phones and it's modern technology, and it's not like mm, fucking all like, that stuff. It'll, it'll be like a lot different. Modern days, right? G racing. Yeah, like I honestly thought they were gonna pull like a like a fucking Spider Man or whatever, where they like make a bunch of movies and then they're gonna be like, okay, we're gonna end it here. We're gonna wait three four years and then we're just gonna reboot the whole fucking thing and everyone's gonna come watch it because of like the nostalgia mm. and stuff, right? Um. I don't know. That's what I thought. Just, just because, like, I feel like I see that incoming for a lot of things, right? Like, I think recently Harry Potter they have a TV series version, right? But does that follow the movie? The same plot? What? Wait, hold on. Let me let me search. It. Let me fact check myself. Um, Harry Potter TV series. The ha- Harry Potter remake will make this. One book death even more death. Okay, yeah. So they're remaking it, but as a TV series on HBO Max or something or something Max Max original. Who's, ca- who's the cast for? Uh, definitely not uh, the normal kids now, right? They're they're too fucking big, right? But uh, that's what I always thought these guys do because they're like, we can't come up with anything like new. So then we just have to reboot the fuck out of stuff. Honestly, it's so weird too because I'm so sure that everyone that works on the movie, the producers, the writers, anyone, the directors directors the directors i'm so sure they go on social media and they can see everyone meme the shit out of <laughs> fucking dom toretto saying family every family. 20 seconds oh. and how everyone says it's getting pretty ridiculous like just yeah, bring it yeah. back to street racing and make it about actual cars people are gonna like it yeah but well, see family. see i think that's even cool too because if if they did do a reboot then they do the whole thing, but with like modern car, like the cars nowadays, and like, <laughs> like one of them's a Tesla. Yeah, yeah, one of them was like a Tesla and shit. And but then, ironic. but then, could you imagine if you saw like a modded Tesla or something there? I'd right, be like, whoa, be that that'd sick. be kind of cool, right? Like, the, I, I, I actually I don't even know how they ask permission from like car manufacturers and stuff. I'm sure they get so many brand deals from. Yeah, cars. yeah, but like. So like back then you would see like an old school like GTR right the the R R thirty five series uh, or R. I used to think like, GTR was king. Yeah, but what if they got so that was like at that time those cars were still relatively recent, right? So like mm. I think when Fast and Furious one came out, ah oh, fuck, don't quote me, but it's like early two thousand, maybe even like the late nineteen ninety nines, and that's literally when these cars came out, right? Mm-mm. But could you imagine the modern versions of like current cars, and they actually put those right. in the movies? I'd be like, yo, that'd the be kind of sick. Most coolest modded versions. Yeah, like things that we can't even think of because no one that buys a new car right now in their right mind would want to mod it, right? Because there's like so much technology involved and all that stuff, and they don't mm. want to fuck around with it. But could you imagine like a like a brand new? I don't know. I'm, a I'm, wide body Tesla. <laughs> something. Or like or like think of like the most recent Mustang or something and then you have that like modded. Right? I'd be like, yo, that'd be that'd be kinda cool. Like I think people would actually want to watch that shit. Uh especially like car enthusiasts and stuff, right? Mm-mm. Or like um okay, this might also sound dumb, but like you you know what a trike is? Like the three wheel motorcycle where it's like two yeah. in the front and one in the back. Or I think some some variations there's two wheels in the front, one in the back, and some is one in the front, two in the back. Oh, I haven't seen a two in But could you imagine one. if they were like modding one of that and racing that like with other motorcycles and shit really or something? Cool. Like that? And someone has like a jetpack. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I mean I think all of that would be pretty sick if they just yeah, brought it back to like real life actual racing and shit. Plus like the the stakes are different too, right? If they brought it back to real life racing and actually like pink slips and all that stuff. Like no one like, kids nowadays don't even know what that shit is, right? They yeah. don't even know what a pink slip is and stuff. Like, don't break my phone. <laughs> yeah, shit like that. Be able to access my documents. Yeah. So but that'd be uh that'd be interesting i i'd, I'd be interested to be pretty cool to see kind of like a reboot or like may- maybe another franchise making it or something like that mm-hmm. anyways yeah, um, i did that and this weekend i'm gonna go camping nice well, i do you go camping often i used to go every single year up until maybe grade 12 or yeah grade 12 yeah. grade 11 and then I just kind of stopped because I stopped hanging out with my family. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, it was the same. It was every year up until like grade 10 or grade 11. Yeah, something like that. And then after that, I was like, nah, I don't know. Like, I still at that age really enjoyed it, I think. I was like still pretty into it. It was like fun to hang out. But now I'm just like, I don't want to like cosplay homeless right now and shit. <laughs> and just, you know, sleep in a tent and stuff. I, I see some like connection to it, like some... I see why people enjoy it, um, but the annoyances and 
the lack of amenities is not worth it mm. for me right now. I mean, I can I can see both sides too. I think I can see myself being like, okay, well, this was fun, but I'm never doing that again because of the perspective of your faking homelessness. But I can also see it as like a way of connecting with nature and just unplugging and hanging out with your friends. And I haven't done it in a while, so maybe I'll be fun. Yeah, no, that's true. It's kind of like I think I think you've ta- you've kind of talked to me about one or talked to me once about this, where it's like. You know, hiking is kind of meh. It's just like, you know, a couple hours of just walking around and yeah, shit. Just walking around looking at the fucking ground. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. And that, that's kind of how I treat, like, camping, too. It's, it's just kind of whatever for me. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing that special. But I, I see some allure to it. So, for example, if I had the opportunity to camp in, like, like a beachy area, that'd be mm-hmm. kind of cool, right? Like, if you were in, like, the Bahamas or something and you had, like, a glamping thing or something like that'd that, be that'd cool. be, like, pretty cool, right? Cause I feel like right glamping there. is completely different, though. True, true. It's you're having not... a space that's more open yes. instead of just camping. I feel like camping, a large part about camping is that, like you said, <coughs> your amenities get taken away. All your, A lot of your comfort and amenities get, get taken away. You get challenged. Versus glamping, you get all of that still, but your front door is just open, like, the whole time, basically. I mean, it's kind of like you get all the benefits without the bad shit. You're right, you're right. But I, I do see if I were, like, in a completely different environment. I just feel like in Canada, where we are, it's just, I just, it's just like, I've seen this environment so often. Mm. Where it's like, I don't really care to wake up in this environment right now. It's kind of whatever, sense, right? Makes sense. I can see yeah. that. Like, if you happen to do... Look, it's not called backyard camping. Um, like Just set up a tent in your back- backyard. Back country, yeah, back country. Where you camping. actually like put it like a backpack and you walk all the way in just to camp and shit. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, is that what that is? Okay, never mind. I was trying to say that would it'd be pretty cool to do camping on like some cliff where there's like a waterfall underneath, or you have a really nice view on the other side, uh, and you're more in an isolated area and it's not an official campground type of thing. Yeah, that's kind of like back country. Yeah, okay. Where, like, that's what I was thinking. You don't just drive your car to the campsite. You actually yeah. have to like hike X amount of kilometers I mean, to get to the site. I mean, you don't have to hike for me. I just want I just want a nice view. <laughs> yeah, let me just take the funicular to this place. Yeah. And, uh, no one else is allowed up here. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna book this whole area per se. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. How was um, your week? For me, not much has happened. I think recently it's been a little slow at work, so my boss has given me some new like projects so like some projects that i'll be like solo responsible for which is really nice what projects are these uh they're just smaller projects but i'll get to see all of like so pretty much right now the one client i'm with is uh suncor and it's like very specific type of side of their work and now i'm getting to see another side of work with a different company uh, so it's kind of nice. Uh, like if it wasn't for this, I'd be pretty upset because like I want more experience. I want more more responsibility right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're they're giving that to me, which I'm pretty happy about, and I'll figure it out. I'll uh, work my way through it. Did Suncor's recent breach <laughs> yeah. affect you at all? I mean, it's kind of fucked because they're like they can't access shit. I mean, this is like public news. They their their whole thing is breached. It's fucked. Uh, so pretty much right now, like. They go to our office in, like, Calgary, and then we send shit to our office in Calgary, and they print it out for them. Oh, that's so sad. And then if they have anything important, people will, like, fly down from Fort Mac just to, like, talk in person. Oh, my God. Um, And then, yeah, like, that's it. And then in terms of timeline, like, I have no... Like, they have told us they have no idea when they're back to normal. I know some people that work at Suncor, and they said that in terms of their operations, they've been doing everything via either in person or on text. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like that on text. Can you imagine sending over a contract via text and be like, just give me a thumbs up? Or can you go <laughs> to office, please? Yeah, give me like two days. Yeah, like some of the like higher ups and stuff that want to review stuff, they're like, Can you text that to us? I'm like, bruh, this is not the way it should work. But <laughs> yeah. okay. For me, I don't like I, I don't give them my number, but like my bosses and do they like exchange numbers with them, right? So mm-hmm. they actually have to do it. But for me, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, guys. Like I'll send it to the Calgary office, they can fucking figure it out. Do you have a work phone? No, I don't have. I like no. I have like a work number, but I don't have a work phone. It's oh, like I through see. Teams and stuff. I see, I see. Yeah, but it's like they they can they can only call through their work phone. They can't access their like they can't even access their own emails and accounts and all that shit. So they're mm-hmm. like majorly fucked. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like they literally said they don't know when they're back up to normal. Yeah, I think it's gonna take a while. Yeah, 
It's like also uh, Petro Canada is related to them in a lot of their sub companies, no, they're, right? Yeah, they're uh, they're in bed together, kind of thing. They're yeah, like, yeah. They're like, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, good luck, I guess. We'll figure the. I, I guess it's it's they'll, they'll have to figure it out. I have no idea. But yeah, that was fucked. Um, what that else? Just reminded me though that you said that when I asked you about your work's phone company, my work pays for my phone bill, and I'm like. Oh, we've recently transferred all our phone numbers and everything to Teams. So technically, my work doesn't need to pay for my phone bill anymore for anything. Yeah. But they still do. <laughs> nice. Just okay. just keep it that way. Hopefully. <clears throat> um, Climbing's been pretty good. So I recently did my first V5. Pretty happy about wow. that. Uh, but then we went to Blocks. So Blocks is a different climbing gym. And we got completely destroyed there. It's just different style. I, I think Blocks is harder than the ones we go to. Which one is um, the one that you go to? I go to Boulders or Factory. Okay. Uh, and I just felt so demoralized. I was like, I can't do shit here. I can't come. So, like, for example, normally, right now, I could flash 50% of the V4s I try. So, mm-hmm. half of the V4s I try, I can do it on the first try. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could only do one of the. So, they have like tape color instead of like V4 numbers. And so, yeah. orange tape is like V4, V5. Like, they, they don't say which one it is. It's just like one or the other. Mm-hmm. Or like in like in a, in a range, right? Yeah. And then at blocks that entire day, I could only do one. I was like, oh, man, shit. I feel so shitty about myself. Did um, you try the level down or the color? The thing is, that? I went one color down, and I could flash it easily, like first oh, try. Shit. So I was like, so okay. The discrepancy is pretty high. So I was telling my friend who goes there a lot, I was like, I was like, I don't think this place is good for you, man. <laughs> I was like, I think you would honestly do better if you come to these other gyms where the the way they scale it is a bit easier per se like i'm not saying people shouldn't try challenging things but i'm just saying like having that confidence of that progression and seeing Mm. yourself actually improve with like actual results i think will help you a lot in terms of your mental state with uh with the sport i agree uh but yeah that's been fun um had joyce's b day this last weekend so that was pretty good um just had nice dinner and then just went to rec room and just chilled that was fun Ooh, was rec room busy <clears throat> not too bad i mean it is i feel like it's always gonna be busy especially the, the south side ones oh i i really think they need like a north side one would be nice i've only been there i think once after covid and it wasn't busy right after covid so i'm not but, sh- i was curious about how busy it is now if it's returned back to normal or anything so both locations i went to before at like around the same time like after dinner type of time it's always been busy Oh, sick. <clears throat> Both at Web and Southside. Um, but yeah, and then I don't really have any real plans for Canada Day. Like, I think the summer's going to be kind of weird because Joyce is, like, working a lot and she's working in Red Deer a lot Oh, this summer. Wow. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Like, something about how they did the schedule. I mean, it's her family's company, her family's business, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, someone has to be there, so it's either her or her brother, I think. Mm. I think for some reason she's there more on the weekend and here during the weekday and then they just switch. Oh, damn. Stuff. Um, yeah, so it'll be an interesting summer for what I... So are you going to switch around? You usually see Joyce on Saturdays, right? Are you <clears> going to switch that around then? Uh, we'll figure something out. I'm not too sure yet. I mean, so we ha- I have a bunch of stuff booked for the summer already, right? So I'm going to go to that Monster Truck Rally, Monster Jam. Mm-hmm. I have Taste of Edmonton. And I already have a day for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have um, K-Days. We're still trying to figure out a day for that. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure when. And then Heritage Days, I think she said she doesn't want to go, but I really want to go just because it's a, a totally new place this year. Oh, where is it at? I mean, I think it's, I don't know which park, but it's not a hard lot because it's under oh, construction. It's closed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it was Rundle, but it could be a different one. But it's oh, somewhere yeah, in the northeast so side. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. I, I still want to check it out and get some of that Scandinavian rice pudding. That's my favorite. Dude, top three is Scandinavian rice pudding. From where? From the Scandinavian booth. I don't know. Isn't it normally? Oh, it's not from like a specific restaurant or anything, right? No. Oh, I know. That's a uh, taste of everything. Yeah, this right. is Heritage Days. Right. So I think top three is Scandinavian rice pudding, Jamaican patty, and the uh, Azerbaijan elephant ears. I'm going to be honest. Last time we tried the Jamaican patty, I was disappointed. Yeah, it was kind of average. Okay, but, good, um, Because I was like, you, you've you talked this up so highly. And then when I had my first few bites, I was like, this isn't I don't, It's just so different from what they used to do. So I'm kind of disappointed, but uh, we'll see this year. Hopefully it gets better. Okay, okay. But the Scandinavian rice pudding, I think the other year they weren't 
there. I think when like right after COVID, they like really downsized. Like I think not as many booths wanted to like s- set up and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we'll see for this year because it's, it's 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 at a new place, so I'm pretty excited about that. Mm, hopefully. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that was a bit all I really did this last week. It's been fucking hot recently. Mm. I was so surprised yesterday. Um, I got something from Amazon and. I forgot to grab it from my front porch until last night at like 2 a.m. I was like, all right, I need to go get my package from my front porch. And when I stepped outside, it was so nice and warm outside because the AC in my house is so aggressively cold that when I stood outside, I was like, wow, this feels so nice. I'd rather be outside than inside right now. Fuck. You have AC. God damn it. I don't have AC. It hasn't bothered me that much yet. It's just annoying when I go upstairs to like cook. Mm-hmm. Cause like my basement's significantly cooler than my right, upstairs, right. Uh, so like in my basement it's always around like I, I want to say like three to five degrees cooler than normal, uh, which is very nice. But yeah, I don't know. I like to think that this room or your basement feels the same like year round. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Uh, actually, in winter it gets a little bit cold, but not like significantly. Yeah, it's it's about the same temperature, which is nice. I mean, I was I was talking to my coworker the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, it's nice here where you can like turn on the tap and it's cold water." I was like, "I guess it's true in Asia when you turn on the tap, it's like lukewarm." Oh my god, you're right. Right, like if you want cold wa- water in Asia, you like need ice, whereas here you just turn on the tap and it's actually cold water. Oh my god, you're so right. But then they also have like <coughs> heater tanks, right? And you have to heat up your water. What do you mean, like? there when you're there yeah 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 yeah. they have that stuff too but like the water is still like warmer right mm. like when, when you when you wash your hands in cold water or something like that it's actually cold here whereas right. there it's right. like already lukewarm it's just outside water yeah, yeah. that's kind of weird but uh anyways this week i, I want to talk about something kind of interesting so recently i read two books okay so i read the Sle- sleeping beauties by stephen king and then I also finished like the Tower of Babel series. I finished that a while ago, but I was really sad about both books at the very end because pretty much um, not the premise of the book, but something that happens with the core characters is that the protagonist and his partner gets like separated for the duration of the book or the series. And that duration is like um, about a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the book, when they do get back together, they don't actually get back together. Like, they don't go back to their relationship, even though throughout the whole book and series, the whole goal is to, like, get back to each other, right? Mm-hmm. But after a whole year, I guess, like, people change a lot and things change a lot and circumstances change a lot. Um, so then it just got me thinking. I was like, man, how does, like, how does a relationship work like that? Because I was thinking to myself, I, like, I guess if I didn't see my partner for a whole year, I'm actually not sure. But... If I didn't see her a whole year for um, uncontrollable reasons, so for example, if she got kidnapped or I got kidnapped <laughs> or some shit like that, uh-huh. then I feel like I would still try try my best and work my hardest to like get the relationship together, right? I feel but, the same. But if it's for whatever reason, like, you know, I'm working here, she's working there, we haven't seen each other in a year, I do feel like we would separate or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, I, like, the whole point I'm trying to make, I guess, is like, how how do people last through a relationship if if people do change like factually people do change like when i do see my partner and stuff throughout a whole year i think we change together and i think that's what keeps people together usually right Mm -hmm. but how how do you build something that is nearly indestructible if if you know what i mean like like a relationship where those things don't ruin it i have a few ideas on this and i feel like the main thing like the biggest part to getting it quote unquote right would be to find somebody that you naturally connect with automatically. Like you don't have to build that relationship that hard. You don't have to force anything that hard. So it's more organic than not. And that they have a lot of qualities that naturally complement your own and vice versa. And you guys, like I said, naturally organically work. And so it would be easier to build a relationship with this person because you guys would naturally want to go within the same direction and all their qualities, whether it's good or bad, would be something that you're okay with. So like in every relationship, you're going to have fights. You're going to have things that you don't like about your partner, but you have to make sure you find somebody that you're willing to go through those kind of bad times with. And then the other two things I think is that one, 
love it love in relationships is a choice so every single time you wake up like even down to the smallest thing every single day when you wake up and every single year you have to make choices to work towards your relationship and to move together than not like you'll always have a million choices to make in a day and a lot of those choices can bring you further from your partner or together and i think that even on the hardest days you kind of have to focus on the commitment that you made towards each other and choose them rather than not even when it's kind of hard and easier to sit, do it the other way because that's how you stay in a committed relationship I guess but then also I think in today's day and age or I guess back then too but more so now I feel like as you grow together and as you accomplish different milestones together you'll be tied down to the same things eventually and it's harder it gets harder and harder to just leave Mm. essentially so you'll have things that such as oh first you'll get a dog together and then you'll get a house together and then you'll have share finances or you'll have like you'll be on the same mortgage or you'll have the same investments things like that and then you'll share family relations like your family you'll know their entire family they'll know your entire family you'll make all these personal relations with their family and all that stuff so it's just harder for you to just one day say oh you know i'm kind of tired of this shit and just back out because you have to go through all these loop not loopholes you have to go through all these blocks and all these things and unravel all the all these things if you actually want out of the relationship at that point so i think there is i think that that's like one of the toughest part is like the family it's like you got to know them so well they got yeah. to know you they treat you like their own yeah and then it's like oh man like not only am i not only would I be breaking her heart, I'd be breaking the family's heart, right? Yeah, and, and it kind of feels like you lost your own family in some <coughs> sense too, right? Yeah, 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 that's true. Well, okay, so on that first note, um, do you feel like, like, do you agree or disagree with the saying, like, opposites attract everything? So, like, when you first said, like, you know, you want to find someone that has similar qualities and stuff mm-hmm. and you guys mesh well together, I truly believe that I can't do that. Like, if I found someone like me, I'd fucking hate it because, like, I'd hate to date myself purely because it would be such a like too well thought out of a relationship. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm, I'm too, I think too much about like efficiency and like, you know, max min and all that shit. And if I date someone like myself, do we be eating like, like chicken and rice every day and just be the boring ass fucking couple kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like when we go on vacation, everything will be way too planned out and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I truly believe like, yeah, it's nice to find people with qualities you like, but also like don't make them the same as your own because I feel like people shouldn't date themselves if 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 you know what I mean. Like I feel like if you know what's good for you, it's not good to date yourself. That is true. I think that we all know our worst qualities and that's why we say that I wouldn't date someone like myself because you will be able to first first and foremost point out their worst qualities because they would be the same as your worst qualities and the qualities that you kind of highlighted within yourself but i think in terms of if i believe opposites attract i think to an extent to an extent the reason why is because i think that you have to have the same values and the same qualities align where it matters and to where it's important to you so you can't be like completely opposites attract or you can't be, sorry, completely opposites or else you guys will not have anything that kind of meshes together. Like you guys would have to have values that align and main things that align that you guys can talk about at least or that you guys can enjoy together and that you guys can work towards together, such as goals and things that you value. I think those are the parts that you can have opposites. Well, for. yeah, I think core value doesn't reflect on personality though right mm-hmm. i feel like core value is one thing a li- well actually i think a little bit like if somebody valued i don't know pe- pedophilia then i think that would reflect on their i don't think that's like personality a, a little core value though like core value okay. would be like um you know like family would be like okay. honesty would be like very specific things for both those examples if they weren't family oriented then i think they would move differently if they weren't an honest per, if they didn't value honesty, then they would also behave differently and communicate differently. No, but I think that uh, that difference is nice. So, for example, for me, like what? Yeah, no, I, I think it's okay. So for me, I'm very, uh, I'm relatively organized and very structured, and I think most of the partners I've ever dated were very like chaotic. 
Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nice to have that imbalance because for me, I was like, if I'm structured and she's structured, then we'd have a boring ass life. That's really interesting. Right. Yeah. But then if she's chaotic and I'm structured, then we bring like a balance to each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Like she, like my partner would force me to do and try things that I never would normally try. Right. And I would provide like some stability to her ongoing chaos of a life. Mm-hmm. Right. So I feel like, she and that that may go back to the values like i you know i value logic and efficiency and all this stuff and she she may not and i feel like that difference actually makes it easier in terms of that right and I, but I, I i get what you mean yeah if they're like into something really weird or their values really far off i think that's just like i don't know how to explain it. it's just like someone so different but i feel like the values may not reflect on the personality of that person right so like for example, if, if I had if I was with someone who's like so if I'm super conservative and someone's super liberal in their like political thinking and that's one of their values, I still feel like our personalities can still match. They're not match, but like our personality can still be good enough for us to like be to t- together, even though one of our core values are so far off from each other. And I feel like that's kind of common. Like there's a lot of couples where their political values may be different from each other. That's true. Politically it could work out, I think. <laughs> on some things it can't so like hard stop things in relationships mm. such as relationship not relationships sorry religion could be one or having kids could be another yeah or how true. much time you spend with each other's family like somebody could be more of a lone wolf uh, it's just me and you type of relationship versus someone could want to involve their entire family the whole way through i think those things are kind of non-negotiables i feel like for the most part like me and my partner has always been very opposite though like very mm-hmm. opposite in a lot of what we do and what we like mm-hmm but I don't know. I, I think for me... I can see why, like, after you gave your your reasoning, why opposites can attract and why it would work out for you and why somebody would like somebody who's the opposite of them. Yeah, I just feel like if it's too much one way or the other, it also, like, I don't know, not freaks me out, but if it just makes me, like, concerned, right? Mm-hmm. And, okay, so this is just me projecting onto other people. Like, if I see a relationship where, like, they're both super chaotic or they both like party hard and some shit. I'm like, that's great. They love the company of each other, but they're more like bros rather than like a couple. Right. Because at some point you have to make some commitments. At some point you have to have some, you know, something working together. Right. What do you mean by that? It can't just be like chaos and parties all day, every day. Right. Like, Mm. like you got to figure something out with your life. What if they're Bonnie and Clyde? I mean, yeah, no, I, that, that's definitely a fucking great example that I guess I never thought about, but it, it could be, but that obviously didn't end well either. Yes, yeah, true. Right. And then, and then the opposite is true too. Like when I see two people that are very sheltered and they're together mm-hmm. and then it's like, dude, like they're always going to be in that bubble. They're never going to break out of it. Do you think that's a problem though? Uh, I think that goes along with the same argument that people have with like, <coughs> Nepo babies are people born with a silver spoon? Like, is it that big of a problem if you never have to leave that bubble, though? And if they're happy in that bubble? Uh, so I think the Nepal part, like, that's kind of different. I was like, I, I, I kind of, to me, that's like, like if I was a, a Nepal kid, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Like, what? like, yeah. pretty much if I had a lot of money, I don't want anyone to ever blame me for giving that to my loved ones, which is my child. Exactly. Like everyone right. would do the same thing or most people would do the same thing. Yeah. But then I just feel like in like a super sheltered way, it just makes me feel bad where they're like, they can't experience the maximum of what life can give them. But at the same time, I'm probably also not experiencing what the mm-hmm. maximum of what life can give me. Right. You're probably in your own bubble that when they look over, they're like, I would never like to experience but, but, a middle class life. But then in that case, like wouldn't. So in my mind, I'm just thinking like, that super sheltered couple together, would that just be like too boring of a relationship moving forward? So like when I think of a relationship, I just don't think like two, three years. I think of like mm. the rest of your life. If you're really going to think rest of your life, I'm like, man, that's going to kind of, that's kind of like, you know, you're with someone for 20 years and you end up hating them kind of thing or you guys never do anything. You guys don't go on dates and you guys just, you know, one of those, I guess maybe TV or whatever they display on on like the mm-hmm. modern american couple or, or something like that right i i think that would suck too that, that's why i kind of like the the whole opposites thing i was like one will force you to go one way but not too much and mm-hmm. the other one will force you to go the other way but not too much either i can definitely see that i can see the bubble thing as well and i don't think it's i used to think <clears throat> it's kind of a bad thing to be like a little bit more sheltered you guys never do anything you guys are gonna get bored but i actually have 
a one of my closest friends she her and her husband now they're they're not boring i wouldn't say they're boring but they live a more comfortable lifestyle at home they like to stay at home actually they like to go out they're they're like social people but i think that they are very comfortable in their own routine they they're not big on traveling so much because they just really enjoy edmonton they enjoy being at home they enjoy their their life they enjoy their little bubble essentially and they're so freaking happy in it like i don't know if i like they're one of the happiest and most solid couples i know that are like the hugest fans of each other they think the other person's the best person in the world and i think that from another person's perspective they could see that oh that like you guys are in your own own bubble you guys might get bored of each other one day but because i kind of i can see the insights of their little world i think that as long as they're there yeah they're probably way happier than a lot of people that i know True, it is kind of relative. I don't. I mean, this could just be me projecting, because uh, in my mind, I always think like there's a problem if you're too comfortable. Yes. Right. Like if you're too comfortable with your job, if you're too comfortable with something. Right? I see that. Too. So then I always see in my brain, I'm always like, "Okay, like you have to go seek that discomfort to grow and learn mm-hmm. and change and like become a better you." Right. Um, and maybe that's why I like prefer someone who's more opposite than me right mm-hmm. i also think i'm boring as fuck so like i need someone like like i said if i dated myself it'd be the most boring fucking relationship <laughs> in the world we'd be way too efficient right mm-hmm. we'd be like fucking buying rice in bulk by the pallet or some shit we'd be uh let's buy rice for the rest of our lives yeah it, it'd let's be go buy a silo it'd be so it'd be so fucking boring man we started value we'd be like life. okay we, we, we'd be so like risk adverse we'd be like okay we're gonna invest in this specific thing and then 25 years later we're gonna have <laughs> this much money and then by then you know we're gonna do this and retire and all that shit it'd be way way too planned out i i remember like a younger me was would plan so much further ahead than my current me Mm-mm. and now like at the current state i am at i'm like fuck i can't plan shit man like really if i plan too far ahead it's just gonna be like a like a disaster in incoming like i have to be able to be flexible enough to take opportunities when they come now oh of course so i feel like if i plan way too far ahead so like if right now i said like hey i want to do you know this specific consulting job and five years later i'm going to do this and then i'm going to get promoted to this in 10 years from now and do all this stuff i i think i would uh i i used to kind of think like that but now i'm more like fuck man you got to go with the flow man like some days or sometimes you just want to like do something else and you have to like push yourself to do that more. And I feel like with a partner who enables that a little bit more, I would be happier. Mm. Right? Like mm-hmm. if, if if my partner was worried about like, oh, but how would you pay the bills? I'd be like, fuck. God damn it. That's not what I want to think about right <laughs> now. Want, do you want a partner that's like, sorry, I maxed out your car today. And you're like, we're on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but at the same time, that would bring uh, specific challenges, right? Like, I would hate that because it's like, that's not efficient. You don't fucking max your car like that, you know? You can, like, you know, s- separate your spending. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not against spending. I'm just saying, like, hey, you know, you can spend a certain amount, you know, per month kind of thing, and it'll still work out and shit. But I, I plan that shit, like, way too much, right? So I, that's why I truly think, like, you need an opposite, right? I feel like if you're too similar, it's not good enough. So, for example, like, if you're both like okay this is another example i've thought if you're too like caring of each other and both of you are way too caring of each other then you can't build your own like the couple of yourselves if that makes sense right i don't get like if you give away all your money to like all these fundraisers and all this shit then you can't actually help yourself before you help other people but that's one way of thinking about it right and the other way of thinking about is like i want to help as many people in the world as possible right Mm -hmm. and i feel like if the couple is too much one way or the other and again this is just me i i just think it's not the balance is not good enough where it may cause harm right so for example so like your values wouldn't be aligned essentially kind of yeah 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 i guess so like some core values but i think some of them it's nice to have it opposite and stuff like which ones um which core values would you be okay with having opposites for (laughs) Uh, this is interesting because I would normally feel like I would want most of most if not all of my core values so for example like religion I don't really care about okay. uh, politics I don't really care about what if they were really religious in a way that okay so for me personally I have almost a heart stuck rule that I would not want to be with someone who's religious oh. because I have been before and my experience with that is that for christianity specifically they kind of 
my experience is that they expect you to switch religions sometime and they would like you to go to church with them and practice Christianity and do, uh-huh. go to church on Sundays and do all these things with them. Uh-huh. And the expect the expectation is in the future, they would want you to bring your kids to church with them and mm. you would have to involve, be involved with the whole church community and do all that stuff. And that's not something that I care to do essentially or care mm. about at all. So I personally would never date somebody that's religious in that sense. But like, I think I would have a little bit more leeway with Buddhism because I grew up with Buddhism and like my parents practice it. You're discriminating. Do all that stuff. Yeah, a little bit actually. But if somebody was <clears throat> regularly doing it a lot and wanted me to also participate, then I think I would have a bit of a problem with that too. Or mm. if they were, I guess, sort of like my parents were... If I would tell my mom that I had an issue, she would give me some sort of Buddhist prayer or some sort of some sort of quote and think that, oh, as long as you follow this, it's okay. But to me, it's more like I'd rather do things based off of science and theory and actual things that are more based in great truth and things like that. Damn, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess for me, that never bothered me that much. I always feel like there's a role in, like, as... I, I, I used to think like that, too. So, like, mm-hmm. I used to think, especially when I was, like, in university thing, I was like, fuck, man. Like, fuck religion. It's all about science, truth, facts, um, proof, evidence, and all this shit. But I don't know. I think I've changed a lot in terms of that thought. I, I've truly thought that I think religion plays a role uh in everyone's life and i think people think too deeply into the the concept or the practice of religion whereas they don't see the community that religion creates Mm. it's like it's pretty much like volleyball to us right so it's not about the actual it's not about how good you are at volleyball it's about the community of being with this with people with like-mindedness right so if you take away all the stories and jesus and buddha and all that stuff and you just think about just the core of like hey this is a group of people wanting to be better people um and i'm not trying to push you on any any really Mm. but it's, it's literally just a group of people who want to be better and care for others in a way that they can't individually do and they're creating a community then for me, I'm like, fuck it. Like any religion, go ahead. It's just about if if you think about it that way, then every religion is pretty good, right? Because mm. like the- I still don't get me wrong, I still respect when oh, other no, people yeah, are religious, yeah, yeah. and I think religion, like learning about religion and all that stuff, the philosophy, I think yeah. it's all really great. I'm pretty sure I'm probably because I don't really believe so much in it. I'm more agnostic than not. That I'm lacking in the experience that you guys have that I'm sure obviously since a lot of people in the world are religious yeah gain from and I am naive in a lot of the benefits and the unity and all that stuff that you guys feel yeah but for me even even me valuing it that's that much it won't bother me that as my value that my partner doesn't have a mm. similar re- religion or e- even if my partner was completely atheist it wouldn't bother me it just be what like what if your partner was Religious to an extent where they would want you to go to church with them every Sunday. Uh, that would probably be a no because I have to go to my church every Sunday, kind of thing. Okay. Um, but if they want to go to their church, then they can do that all they want. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a showstopper for me. What if they wanted you to? Oh, what was the word? What if they wanted you to adopt their religion? Yeah, I, I, that'd be a hard, like, it, it, it'd be a no, but I think that goes beyond just, like, core value at that point. That's, like, forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do, right? I think you could argue that it's still core value for some people because they love you so much and it's such a deeply ingrained mm. value in them that they don't understand why you're just not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That religion. I guess, but, so, I guess the question goes back to, is that a core value where opposites don't attract i just feel like when when i mean opposite it could just be like hey we just have completely opposite religions or our religion like our value of it is not the same Mm -hmm. but then i wouldn't say like that's something that irritates me to not have a relationship with them right Mm -hmm. i feel like i don't know like i feel like there's so few for me that 
matters if that makes sense so like for me the only ones that would matter would be like you know are they an asshole or not and even if they are i actually am not completely <laughs> against it like i feel like some some people are just too nice and that kind of bothers me too right so i feel like you know some people have to have a backbone and like put their foot down mm-hmm. and i hate it when people are too nice right and i think i'm the opposite of that i think i'm not too nice i think i'm actually a pretty mean person really uh, not like i feel like i don't have mal- uh, malicious intent but I have a very realistic breakdown of life. So when someone tries to be like too, you know, lucky go happy and like, you know, all this nice shit, I just want to tell them straight. I'm like, that's not how life works, right? Like, you're too naive. Would you classify that as mean though? I believe that mean kind of has to have that malicious intent. Let's just say, I feel, I just, let's just say like, well, it's kind of tough. So it's like, I'm not opposite of nice, but I'm also not nice. Like, op- I feel like opposite of nice doesn't have to be mean, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, There's okay. There's still a neutral yeah. ground. But then, but then, so again, that's like a core value where I can be opposite of someone. Where, mm-hmm. okay, if that person's a lot about like, you know, giving to the community and being nice to everyone and all that shit. Whereas I'm like more pragmatic in my approach of doing things and mm-hmm. accomplishing something. And I feel like I'm completely opposite with someone who is, you know, more giving and caring and stuff like that, right? Like some people will not give a shit and they'll give, they'll, they'll, they'll donate whatever they can. Right. Whereas I'm like, no, no, no. Like I got to see exactly where the fuck this shit's going to. I got to see all this stuff like that. Right. And I, I want to be um, very pragmatic in my approach. I don't like the naiveness and stuff like that. And I feel like that opposite is nice because if someone was just like me, do we'd be the most like selfish people too. Right. Like we'd be too restricted in our way of giving. Right. Right. right? Whereas if I was with someone who, is more willing to give than it to me it creates that balance where it's like okay i know they want to help people and now they're encouraging me to help people because if that person was like me we wouldn't even talk about this <laughs> like this isn't even a dis- discussion we're just move we're just going to move on right right but now i see that as part of someone that i enjoy spending time with and this is their kind of mission statement or goal that they want to do that then be like okay i want to en- enable you but i also don't want to be poor Mm-hmm. right so then it's like I'll, I'll help you find that balance and it kind of goes back to the whole thing i was saying in the beginning where it's like you can't be or for me in my opinion i can't have a partner too similar to me because we'll be too fucked up in one specific way right yeah so for example if my partner is very giving and i'm also very giving and we're both super naive dude we're gonna get scammed so fast <laughs> right like we're, we're we're gonna go to vegas one day and we're gonna have a fucking town town share there or some shit uh-huh. like that right so i feel like that opposite to me is like very critical but that opposite also is very harsh because i feel like when change happens those opposites uh gets enlarged and inflamed if that makes sense so like Mm -hmm. that opposite value becomes a hurdle that you have to pass um because that's the one thing you you kind of look at when you come into like arguments and issues within a relationship right Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's that's why at the first part when you're saying like you know you find someone with similar qualities i was like to a certain extent yes like i like specific qualities of people um but at the same time i feel like i'm not too concerned if some of the core things of who we are are not the same like if i dated another engineer i'd be fucked like i feel like we'd be too too robotic the relationship is too like I don't Do you know. feel like all engineers are made the same though, or no, everyone no, 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 that no. takes engineers? It's 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 kind same. of an example. I'm okay, just saying yeah. like that type of person. Like if you if you look at a classical engineer type okay. of personality, if I dated someone like that, I'd be like, no shot. That's that's probably never gonna work. Mm-hmm. Right. I feel like, or from what I gather, when you highlight opposites attract, it's somebody who will help you grow essentially. Someone who will bring you out of your comfort zone because they're not in the same comfort zone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, pretty much. Like, yes, someone who will bring you outside of who you think you should be. Mm-hmm. Because most of the time, who you think you should be um, is a limited view, mm-hmm. right? So, like, when someone else looks at it, they get a, a new perspective and a different perspective. And sometimes that perspective could be great, right? Um, and I think that's, like, super necessary. But that's just my thought process. Um, and that was just like a tangent of like when you were talking about like how, you know, people have to be similar. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. My first thought would be completely opposite of that. Actually, oh, really? I think I would like somebody who's more similar to me than not. Oh, damn. Because I find that when somebody has similar interests, like I haven't found anyone that obviously is that similar to me in that sense. But whenever I find somebody that has, for example, really similar music taste to me. It's something that piques my interest 
so much more than if somebody has the complete opposite music taste. I mean, that's like a very narrow thing. Yeah, very but- narrow. But also thing like anything. I would to me it would make me feel like there are more like my best friend and we have a lot of similarities and we can mm-hmm. like bounce ideas off each other because we think kind of the same or we understand each other a little bit more. And I think that understanding piece is like huge for me. And I feel like I would feel that more easily if I found a lot more similarities in the other person with mm-hmm. me than not. I get that. But I also think like that's great for your like bro your best friend and stuff mm-hmm. like that but i feel like i i guess another thing and this this might go back to the core value another thing i value a lot is like your independence i feel like we have to grow independently and then together if we only rely on growing together then we become um this amorphous blob we're one person mm-hmm. like both of us become one person i feel like when your identity becomes that it's very um harsh i because I think you're always going to go through hard shit. And if you can't fix it by yourself, how are you going to do it with someone? Yeah, like a hundred, hundred and ten percent. Like I, yeah. I'm huge on staying as an individual and still having a personal identity, even when you're in a relationship. And that when you're in a relationship, you should support each other to be their own person. Like they're not just your girlfriend or your boyfriend yeah. that's in a relationship with you. They're still this person with this name who has their own life and their own goals and their own family and their own story and their own everything. And you should just support that. But then you guys kind of walk along together in your relationship. And I think that's huge. Yeah. And you should still have your own identity, everything, your own alone time, all that shit. But I think that in terms of opposites attract or whether I like similarities attract, I think that I'm pretty good at keeping my own identity and my own life and my own, Mm everything even when i'm in a relationship so that but when i'm interacting with the relationship itself i would like somebody who's more in sync with me than not in that sense i see i just feel like if i was really in sync with someone Mm -hmm. we would do everything together and i feel like i would hate that like it's it's nice to do a lot of things together but i hate doing everything together why don't you just say no to doing some things no no but i'm just saying like if you're really in sync with someone right like Mm -hmm. you have a lot of the similar um interests and you have a lot of similar personality well if so say both your personality you're very ambitious and then you both like gym you go to the gym together all the fucking time you don't have to just no 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 i know i understand but like i feel like more than likely or more than likely that will happen right unless you really prioritize and you really value your independence then you could eventually someday be like Okay, you can just go in the mornings. I'll go at night, and we go to different gyms. Or once, maybe we'll work out once a week together. Yeah, then I guess that means the other value they have to have is also independence, right? Mm, so they both have to have the exact same thing. Uh, and then if you're both super independent, but then you're both also super in sync, then it's like, what the That's fuck do we do together, sick. and what do we not do together? It's like, well, no, but like, so it is true. Like, for example, me and my current partner, we're both very independent, and we value in independence a lot. Yeah. But we also have like things that are totally different. Like, she likes creative stuff. I like, you know, very specific things too. Mm-hmm. So then we do those independently, and then we sometimes do the stuff we like together, like as one, right? Yeah. Um, but I think. If it's too in sync. So for example, if she liked also working out and volleyball and all that shit, then it'd be like, well, I guess we'll go together. Like it's, we're already both there. Right. And then it would kind of interfere with our path to growing separately. I can definitely see that. Like, I think that if you had the exact same hobbies in every single thing, yeah, I would probably find that annoying too. Yeah. Because eventually if you live together, even if you live separate, then it would seem more convenient than not to do everything together. Yeah, yeah. And I think it would be a little bit hard to constantly be like, okay, well, today's my day or today's the day where we get space. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because then they'll they'll feel hurt or you'll feel hurt when the other person asks for space and stuff like that because mm-hmm. you guys are doing everything together because you're so quote unquote in sync, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's just how I think of it, which is why I, I think maybe not that in sync in that sense. And you're like um, taking a shit, holding hands and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no way. But okay, I know some friends that actually kind of do that. Yeah, that's fucked. They love that much synchronicity. I think I know who you're talking about too, and I'm. Uh, <laughs> that's just not. I don't know. It's yeah. just, just something that's. And it could be, I feel like there's probably, 
it, it could be exactly like what this podcast is. It could be fifty percent of the world thinks like my way of like opposite of track, whereas the other fifty percent be like, no, we have to be very similar people, right? Mm. Um, and I think it's just at that point, personal preference and history. Like you may have some type of history that makes you lean one way or, or the other. Mm. Uh, so that could be it too. But then, so the going back to the original kind of thing was like. How the fuck do you build this indestructible thing of a relationship? I just feel like, okay, the one thing I feel like people don't value enough, and I myself... Communication. No, I, actually, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Communication is one thing, but I feel like uh, people fuck that up a lot, where they just think of the the term and the action of communication without the intent of communication, right? Yes. Uh, so they're, they're just... Speaking without listening. Yes. Or they go in without the intent of actually listening. But... They just want to speak. But I also think a core of communication, and this might sound very Zen and shit, but it's also like um, being more introspective too. Oh, so, so 100%. I, I think sometimes when I, in the past, when I've, uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll draw out the whole scenario that I did to Viv but before we kind of start the show. So like when I go on vacation with people and stuff, I find that a lot of people are really dumb uh, <laughs> that aren't me. Uh <laughs> That's uh yeah, but I just find like they don't like they're not observant like they don't see you know hey what are the local people doing they don't see like hey you know traveling here this is what you're supposed to do or they don't do any research before they go or they don't like figure shit out like when I'm at an airport I'm super efficient I know where the fuck to go I know what the fuck to do I know what time to get there I know how airports work and I know like how to get through it without any stress like mm-hmm. I'm like very low stress when I go through any airport or Me anything too. like that um but then some people I've traveled with. <laughs> Like, they are also low stress, but they're fucking everything up. They're like, oh, they're a little late for this, they're a little fucked up for that. And then it's just like a That's snowball it. effect that just fucks up the whole trip, right? In my opinion, it fucks up the whole trip. For them, it's like, I'll just go with the flow, right? I'm like, okay, cool. But for me, it's like, I'm super observant. I know what to do. Um, and then some people I travel with don't. And then that gets me really frustrated and shit. Um, and then what I've learned recently is like, that frustration is just me. Like, it's not them. It's not other people. And I feel like people, when they have communication, they uh, they just say what they don't like without thinking first of like why they don't like something or why something's actually bothering them. And I feel like sometimes when you do that introspectiveness, it actually like you can actually figure some shit out. So for example, for me, like that frustration is just me. Like my my limit of control is the limit is me. Like I can't control other people and I can't do any of that shit. Right. So when I get frustrated, that's just me having that emotion on that part it's not that person's fault like like people have to learn and grow so it's not that person's fault that that person didn't do th- or know that thing or it's not that person's fault that that person like did something wrong it's just me being frustrated about it right mm-hmm. uh so now i feel like when, when people always say like you know communication is key to relationship i also feel like man like i feel like you have to have like intent when you talk because oh yes when sure. you when you sometimes when you start talking and then you go through this whole roundabout way and the whole time you're literally just talking to yourself and you just figure it out kind of like oh shit if i just talk to myself first or like actually think about it i would solve so much of the issues already or at least i will come in with a more concise and clear message right um but yeah like i think i think that's also necessary because people have to like understand the limit of what they can and cannot control and i feel mm. like that affects the relationship or not like i feel like to create an indestructible relationship you have to understand what you can and cannot change and if someone has a like someone develops a habit or like your partner does something that you absolutely fucking hate i feel like people believe that they can change that and that's what ruins the relationship yes I agree. I have a few points too. Uh, I believe that when you say that sometimes you have to talk to yourself first before you address the problem, I think to an extent, like yes and no. So obviously you should always be more introspective, reflect on what you're actually feeling, try and be a better communicator and express what you're really feeling without any, without bullying or without trying to be mean or protecting your ego or anything like that. It's definitely good to have that kind of introspection where you talk to yourself, you reflect on how you feel and what you actually want out of the issue, how you want to express it, how to break down the issue, what solutions you may think of, how you how you may want to move forward. But I think that a large part of fi- creating that solution is obviously also talking out, talking that out with your partner and working out that part afterwards. So you can go in with a sort of proposal to the problem 
but I believe that a large part of figuring out the solution is you guys actually talking about it together. So I think this is pretty like clear, right? But the reason why I'm saying this is because in a previous relationship that I had, I was told whenever I had any issues to not talk about it unless I worked that out myself first. Mm. And if I can tell myself it's okay, then just don't bring it up at all. Oh, damn. Which, which I think is like obviously not right. And I think that if you were to create a relationship that not obviously you don't need to bring everything up. Obviously not everything needs you to like yap and egg and all that shit. Like, but I think that if you can create a relationship with the least amount of gray areas as possible, then that's better. So you could have little things that you don't say th- for the last like five years, but eventually it'll become a huge pet peeve of yours or it can mm. become a huge pet peeve of yours where you eventually might blow up. And it's like, oh, why didn't you bring up this issue to me five years ago when it started annoying you? And you could you can say, oh, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. But then it was small enough of an annoyance that it built up until one day you just blew up. And for that kind of thing, I think that with what I was saying earlier about creating the creating as little amount of gray space as possible for little things like that, I think that they're very easy to bring up. And obviously, if you communicate in an okay way, then it shouldn't cause any problems. Saying things like, oh, when you chew with your mouth, mouth open, it kind of annoys me a little bit. Can you just refrain from doing that? You could say it in a nicer way, obviously, but imagine if so. you imagine if you didn't say that for say five years, and one day while you're having dinner and you just had a bad week, you'd be like, "Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Holy shit! Can you eat with your mouth closed?" And obviously, to the other person, that would come off as a complete surprise. Like you've yeah. never mentioned that this is an issue before. What the hell? So I think in terms of the talking to yourself thing, mm, like okay, yeah, I, yeah, I, I see it from the, from that side too. It, it there's an extent for the, where that should go, and for communicating you know and in terms of communication of what you're talking about earlier when you said that i know that people highlight communication as one of the most important things in a relationship and how you slightly disagree because some people need to be more introspective and need to do more reflection i agree but i think that in that sense then they're not truly communicating then because i believe that communication is a lot more broader and a lot more wider of a scope and of a skill than people take it to be. So it's not just, like you said, not just saying everything that you think is wrong and everything that you're mad about, everything that you're upset about. It's also being able to receive comments back and be able to reflect on what what you feel, what's given back to you, all the interactions, the solutions given, and being able to be malleable in order to work towards a common goal or a solution and all that stuff. Like the whole thing is communication. It's not just saying what makes you upset and what you want to happen. It's also taking into account what the other person is saying and how the other how what you're saying might have affected the other person or how it might have came off to the other person or being in the other person's shoes or even stepping in your own shoes and seeing how you could better show how you feel and all that stuff. Like there's so much more and being able to let go of your ego too, which I feel like a lot of people have in arguments and whenever they're upset, like letting go of your ego and actually being able to listen without having an agenda first or waiting, waiting to talk. Cause I feel like a lot of time when you're speaking to someone, if they're not a great listener, then they're just, they're not really listening to you. They're just waiting to waiting until they can say their next piece. Mm. And I think, all that encompasses communication, and if you're lacking some of that, then you're not truly communicating. I, I feel like I'm uh, I'm very cynical. Where I think like people when they say that shit, or when they say communication is key, they just think like, okay, if I talk, that's fine. Like as long as I communicate something. But I, in my mind, I'm like, man, a lot of people don't do like the extra steps before and after. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that like I think a lot of people just broadly generalize oh yeah yeah you know communication is key so i'm talking to them i'm like it's, it's not the same though it's like you have to fucking think about it a little mm-hmm. bit um like what what i've always thought about recently is like i think i'm i used to be a lot more like emotional and like maybe a lot more angry or frustrated and shit but i think i've taken a step back and be like okay like why the fuck are you angry or like after a certain situation would happen where i'm aggravated i would just like think to myself first before i actually like speak up where it's like okay why are you annoyed at this and then it could just be like oh you're hungry okay well Mm -hmm. like fuck it like that's not an actual issue like let's not just blow this thing up just because you're hungry right Mm -hmm. um and i think a lot of times people are way too emotional 
at the moment because they don't they're not willing to like think first before they act mm. out right yeah, but yeah. I, okay so like on that note are you um like i think a lot of people will say like oh yeah if you have an issue you should like bring it up right away so it doesn't become a problem like later on and shit but sometimes i also think like like man let's uh let's sit down and think it through yourself first because it could just be you like it could just be completely yeah. a you problem right now right yeah. And then you're just lashing out on someone else because it's a you problem. And then when you speak, you can say hurtful things because you're frustrated or angry. Mm -hmm. And then again, it's still just a you problem, right? Um, I don't know. I think I see both sides to it. Like sometimes I don't bring up a problem. And then later on, it just becomes like, ah, whatever. Like it's it's too late now. You know, the train's already moved on. Mm -hmm. I don't want to bring it up now. Uh, but sometimes it becomes severe enough that I'll be like, okay, I'm going to bring this up like at this moment. I just have to find the right moment and stuff. But sometimes that passes too. So it gets uh, it gets really annoying for me. But I don't know. I, I think I'm more of in the school of, hey, you should like first figure out like why you're feeling this emotion before you just bring it up. I agree. I think that if you if anyone reacts to their emotions immediately when you feel it, then you just have poor emotional control. Yeah, like, like, like baseline. That's my hard opinion on that. You just you're you're still an infant in controlling your emotions because when kids get angry, they immediately show anger. When kids mm. get upset, they immediately burst out crying. When kids get overwhelmed with emotion, they'll throw a tantrum immediately. And I think that if you do that same any of that same actions as an adult, then you just have poor emotional control. If yeah, you throw a tantrum as an adult, if you lash out, if you get mad really easily as an adult or you i don't know you cry really easily then you just have poor emotional control mm -hmm. and i think that in terms of bringing things up for as for a fight or things that you're upset with or bringing up an issue it's not for me it's not bringing it up immediately right away i think it's bringing it up at the best time possible so the best time possible could be after you cool down a little bit mm -hmm. the best time possible could be when you guys go home and you're yeah. not in public in front of like all your friends and everybody. So you don't need to bring it up in front of their family, in front of whoever's around at the time. Bring it up when you're alone in private or bring it up when they don't have an important meeting the next day or something like that. So literally the best time possible in that sense, I think, over just harboring it and saying, ah, it's not a big deal. Even yeah. if it's a small thing, you could maybe two days later be like, oh, yeah, by the way, on Tuesday, yeah, you're eating your mouth. That was kind of annoying. <laughs> I mean, best time possible would be the best case, I think, in order to negate as much gray areas as possible. I think this also works for friendships, too, because I think for friendships, it's really, really easy to create a lot of gray areas. Yeah. And if you can just communicate enough at the best time possible, whenever you think that is, to prevent as many as many gray areas as possible, then I think that's the best for relationships in that sense when it comes to issues <sighs> yeah no i i also think like I, I guess for me i think friendship's a little bit different too from from relationships like sometimes that resistance is kind of nice like what kind of resistance <laughs> like i would hate to be around a bunch of yes men oh yeah of course yeah so like i'm actually okay if i hate something about them but that something isn't like stupid if that if you know what i mean like for example yeah. i don't mind if my friend is say more naive or more cynical than me but I need that. I, sometimes you need both, both or either perspective from from yourself too. If you are in a relationship with someone who was really naive, I don't think you could be like, "Can you stop being so fucking naive?" Uh, I think I could say that. I feel like I could say that. I mean, in the sense of actually wanting to them to change in that sense. Oh, like how you couldn't really say that with a friend because that's more of the personality type. You could be like, "Hey, by the way, you just totally got scammed there." I think that's something you need to be more aware of. I think uh, that might be like one of the core values where it's like it can't be too far off for me. Mm. <laughs> for for me, for me, like I like it can't be aligned for sure. Like we can't both be naive and we can't both be cynical because we're both yes, too too cynical. Then our like our openness to life is just too too shrouded. Yes. And then if we're both too naive, then it just feels shit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like it can't be too opposite either. Mm -mm. like we have to be relatively similar on the spectrum but one i still think is more than the other mm. and i think that's kind of like a great balance to that i think you can have all that but not have them be yes men still i fucking like, hate yes with the partner because yeah me too you don't i don't need anyone to suck my dick yeah 
She can do herself, guys. <laughs> yeah, I've removed my ribs. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I see that. I, I guess the whole point of what I'm trying to converse is like, I, I'm i pretty glad that you have a pretty like different perspective to relationship to me because mm-hmm. it kind of like brings me to like think a little bit more too, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I know for sure like something I don't do enough is like speak up when it, something does bother me. Like a lot of times I'm just like, ah, fuck it. Like they're just a child kind of thing. Or like this is something that it's just whatever. And ne- it never builds up and just harbors until one day it uh, gets too annoying. Yeah, sometimes then, it does, but for the most part, if it's severe enough, I like actually talk about it. But for example, with friends, I don't really bring it up that much. So like for friends and shit, it'll be like, you, you, like I swear, like all our whole group is always late and shit, and that kind of bothers me a lot. But I'm like, <laughs> ah, it's it's it doesn't bother me enough to like actually say something about it. Mm-hmm. It's just annoying at times, right? But then that annoyance is kind of just like when I get annoyed at that, I just think of perspective at that point. I'm just like, okay. What if I was in their shoes and like my car broke down and that's what I'm like. I'm like, I, I guess I would want people to give me leniency too, right? Mm. Um, so like, it's kind of nice having that opposite too because it makes me think about it. A bit. I, I don't know. For some reason, I really like having very, very I mean, different perspectives from my own. That, I think that's also great too because if you had everyone that thought exactly the same as you, like for the relationship example before too, if they were exactly the same then you'll never grow and you'll never have anything any ideas to bounce off of and you won't have that banter that i think is very crucial to relationships or at least the one that i would like i think some people fucking like love that though you know what i mean i i I actually i can't name specific people on the spot right now but i feel like some people really want a echo chamber all the the time i I can like they, they want people who are very similar to them they don't want very conflicting relationships and stuff like that um, I think I'm too easy to please. I just need a few things to be okay, and then I'm good. No, I'm 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 not even talking about you, but like I know a lot of people who like want their life to be so monogamous, where not mm-hmm. monogamous, but like very syn- synonymous. Like mm-hmm. all their stuff is all the same. Their friends are similar people to them completely. Their relationships are the same, mm-hmm. and uh, I just feel like that's like limits your potential to learn from different experiences. And being an individual, I think, <clears throat> and that's when relationship becomes your whole life like yeah that. and then so then I, I guess going back to the original thought is like how do you create an indestructible relationship i guess for me at first i was thinking is like hey people gotta like think a bit more about like their own actions but it's true you still have to properly communicate that and without letting that brood for too long if there are issues right mm-hmm. like the, the one thing that i i've kind of thought about is that so in these books, the people change so much over this course of like a year because of traumatic experiences and things like that, that mm-hmm. they, they just can't become together again. Right. Mm-hmm. And it just makes me feel so sad because I'm like, fuck, the whole book was about them trying to like find their partner again. Right. And then at the end they found each other, but they're not, not compatible they're, they're not the same they anymore. They sync anymore. Yeah. And it just be like, like in my opinion or in my thought processes, after I read the book, I was like, how would I avoid that? Like, is it even avoidable or is it inevitable, right? Mm. And then, like, I guess my thought process is that if they were more flexible in their way of thinking, then it could be avoidable. But then they can't be too flexible to the point where their values aren't the same anymore. What if it's not necessarily about flexibility, but that within that one year span, through everything that they've gone through, they're just such different people that they don't feel a connection anymore? No matter how badly you want it, you just don't feel it that it's there anymore. But, okay, so th- on this part, I feel very naive. I feel like, like you know, the love should break through and they should figure shit out Aww. and all that stuff. <laughs> well, because, like, you know, like, you read this fucking 700-page book or, like, the series where it's, like, fucking, I've spent, like, four weeks reading this whole series of, like, four books and shit like that, right? And I'm so invested in the plot. Um, and I just think, like... Like, what they've gone through is a clear exaggeration of real life. Because it's a story. There's, mm-hmm. like, sci-fi shit to it and all this stuff. But that being said, like, how is this any different from, like, marriage? Like, in a marriage, you have to... You will go through something that could potentially be catastrophic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could last for over a year. And what? That just ends up in a divorce? I feel like every marriage yeah. would probably go through something catastrophic and would probably go through it for a long duration, right? Mm-hmm. So then it just makes me feel sad or it makes me self-reflect and think like, if I were to get married, how would I avoid this from happening? Right? Because yeah. because this test will, like, obviously this is a fictitious book. 
or fictitious series. But I was like, this is kind of like kind of nice that it ended like this because now it's forcing me to think about like my relationships and forcing me to think about like how do I create something that's um, ironclad to these clashes. But then that being said, I also thought about like what if I'm just wanting the protagonists to get back together too much, where I'm not seeing that they have to like they'll become better people not together. Right? Yeah, that could be. Uh, but then again, then it goes back to the well. It's like. Hey, like marriages last and they go through catastrophes. How the fuck do people do it? Like there has to be like, I don't know. Like for me, I always think like there has to be like a formula or like a way to do it. Right. Like the, the engineering mind of me be like, you know, what's the fucking solution? Right. Like how, how do you get through that shit? Right. I think there's definitely like, like I said before, like a mix of things where you, maybe you're too tied down that even in the midst of your turmoil and all the issues and everything's all bubbled up to the surface it's just a little bit the discomfort of breaking everything that you've built together. It's just that much more harder than it is to walk, walk away still regardless. Yeah. And then, so even in the midst of all that, you would still try because you're like, fuck, but the fucking mortgage or (laughs) something like that. It's just a little bit too much more of a pain in the ass for you to break right now than the entire issue that is your relationship. And I also think that in terms of trying to create a relationship that is ironclad and guaranteed to never change and you never break, I think that to an extent it's impossible. I, I well because change is pretty ine- inevitable. I, I, I wouldn't say never change. That that's actually not what I said. But I would say like they're flexible to change together. Mm-hmm. Right. That that in my opinion, when I went through the books, I was like, that's the only fucking way is that if they both could be in each other's shoes and change together after the situation i think that with the intent you can both try very hard to consistently grow together and understand each other and no matter because obviously yeah like you said in the beginning of the podcast you're not the same person as you were one year ago you're not the same person as you were 10 years ago it's very very difficult to find one person who will be aligned with you for the next 70 years 60 years 50 years or whatnot the entire way and be aligned with you and be your literally your fucking partner for life the entire time i think it's very difficult so yeah you guys will change you guys will like have to navigate and fall back in love with each other your new versions of each other every five years every year or so but i think that even with all the that intent to an extent you can't fully control it because you can try really hard but eventually what if one day you just don't connect anymore like you've grown so much that you just kind of even with all the effort and all the desire from both parties to stay together yeah. what if you just literally just don't feel it anymore like how the fuck do people get married then like isn't that like does that thought you, you not gonna think about that shit tied down to you like that maybe, shit is what's maybe, anchoring you guys to keep maybe. going but and i feel maybe so you guys disconnect for five years you guys mm. don't really feel that close and then mm. suddenly you grow back to the other because you guys were tied down by a mortgage or kids <sighs> or something for those five years so you never separated but then you grew back together that's that, that, that i guess that's true i feel like a lot of asian family is kind of like that like <laughs> yeah. the parents were like fucking hated each other's guts for like five years yeah like years. during a specific time of the family's life they just hate each other and then afterwards they grow back together no I, I i do see that being a thing i just feel like for me i'm so okay in terms of like love i'm so naive i just feel like you have to go for it like you have to like if you don't okay so like i believe in two things i believe you learn to love i believe that too so then i believe once you change you can learn to love again I think so too. And like I think that's the constant changing that you have to do throughout your life when and you have a partner, right? So then I think that that has to be the intent throughout the relationship. So then like this whole five years thing kind of bothers me. I was like, no way that's going to happen because throughout the whole five years, I would always strive to learn to love, right? Yes, I think so too. But like then, every time is its choice. But what if it's just, no matter how hard you choose, you just don't feel it. I think mm. that feelings is something that no matter, you can have the intent and you can put in the practice and the routine and everything to navigate your feelings and to do all that stuff but your feelings naturally is not something you fully control like what you feel is what you feel yeah and what if you literally just fall in love with them maybe you love them more like a family than a romantic partner at some point Mm. i feel like at that point you have to um (laughs) okay this is just my thoughts (laughs) but i feel like you'd have to like step sis (laughs) (laughs) you'd have to uh do something drastic to try to like i don't know shake things up a little bit i guess Hmm. 
Because I feel like, uh, like, I identify as. <laughs> no. For, okay. So for me, I feel like sometimes, and I feel like everyone feels this at a point of relationship, you're like, man, this person's being kind of annoying, or like you feel that, like, mm-hmm. not as in love with them as before, right? Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, when you don't see them for like a whole week, you're like, oh, fuck, I missed some like crazy, right? And then yeah. you kind of mini lost something. Mm-hmm. So then you like cherish it more later. If that's mm-hmm. what makes sense. Mm-hmm. But then in marriage, you can't really do that because you'll see each other almost every day, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, mean, I think practicing gratitude is pretty great, guys, for a lot of things. But I feel like practice. Okay, so this, this, this might sound like dumb, but like practicing gratitude is one thing. But when you actually lose something, it feels different. Oh, and yeah, it's just yeah, like of course. it hits a lot harder. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. For now, it's okay. I I guess I'm I'm afraid of future commitment because right now I have something so great where it's like I don't get to see my partner all the time. So then when I don't when I do see her and say like she bo- like something of her bothers me mm-hmm. throughout the duration of not seeing her, I'll like miss her a lot again, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so then that will reinvigorate my like desire, and then it will like force me to also be thinking more of my own interest like it be a bit more introspective be like okay why did she actually do that is it something bad or is it just you you know being being a dumbass or something like that right Mm -hmm. Uh, i feel like the time apart forces you to think more Mm -hmm. um critically Mm -hmm. right Uh, but then like one day i would probably see her almost every day i ideally like i it's kind of weird like i have commitment issues but i don't have commitment issues so like I've only had like long term relationships. I've never had like like uh, any actual relationship less than six months that aren't like a fling. Like a fling, I I don't really count as right. Okay. Um, but then I was at the same time right now. I'm just thinking like, fuck, man. The next step is kind of scary, right? It's like, what the fuck is the next step? Because that's such a huge thing, right? Like, how yeah. the fuck do people do it? Because as we've just talked about, like people change. How do you get through that? I don't want to like hate the person that i'm with for like five years and then learn to love again in like yeah after that right so i was like fuck how do people do it like that's like the one thing that always made me thought of marriage a lot different than other people mm-hmm. so like and this might be like a little insight into why i think like that but for me i've seen way too many people that are married that fucking hate each other and I've seen so many people who aren't married but have like kids together and stuff like that and they're perfectly happy. Yeah. So for me, I'm always thinking like, fuck this chaotic, not chaotic, but this like very old school way of doing a relationship. Like why, why does that have to like get into things, right? I, I personally, okay, for the marriage piece, I feel like when people get married and they're not, and they don't actually <laughs> like each other, I feel like it's because they set a goal to be married. mm Versus to find somebody who they actually want to be married to. Yeah. Which is like the whole caveat for me with being married and wanting to get married in life. I think that if you set a goal to be married or if you dream of being married one day, yeah. then you're more likely to more likely than not to settle for a partner that'll want to marry you than to find somebody that you would actually want to marry, if that makes sense. Because you'd want to find someone that'll help you accomplish your goal versus help Versus finding someone who truly aligns with you, which I think is significantly harder than to find somebody who won't want to marry you. Mm, possibly, yes. But uh, yeah, so then that's why, I guess if anyone ever asked, like that's why I'm so against that shit. Because <laughs> I'm just like, man, how the fuck does this, it just didn't make sense to me for a while. Like, don't get me wrong, my parents are like happily married for a long time. A lot of my like aunts and uncles are, and like, good for them kind of thing but in my mind I'm, I'm always like why does this one thing actually have to matter uh so that's why i was always against it too i don't I, think it should matter no 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 i i don't but like to a lot of people it does right mm. i feel like we're both unique in that way like mm-hmm. i think i want to say like 75 percent of society don't think like we think on this specific topic mm-hmm. or more right um but yeah i i, I guess the, you kind of did like talk me into like what the solution is to this plot hole that i'm getting in these stories at the very end right Mm -hmm. like how to get through that shit so it it does make sense like those are like the kind of the key steps but i guess you kind of don't know till you to just do it Mm -hmm. i think like that right like i think all in all i would say to find somebody who's genuinely your best friend and not just somebody who you have a romantic relationship with because i think if you just have the romantic relationship part then it's a lot easier to break than if you true than if that person is truly a best friend of yours. Because mm. if they're just a romantic partner, then they only 
have part of the qualities that would allow you to respect them and love them and care for them as a person and like completely versus like imagine if someone was your family member then you obviously wouldn't care for them in a romantic way you obviously you may not care about them in a friendship way or anything like that but you'd care for their health and all that stuff a little bit more but or a friend or a best friend you would care for their health probably because they're your best friend and you would care to actually spend time with them your free time and if so if you had somebody who encompassed encompassed all these different i guess roles in your life in that sense like they were not just a romantic partner they're also your best friend and you could see them as like a family member which i believe would be the marriage part of getting married in a relationship they're kind of your, your they're basically your family now they're also your best friend and i think that would be the best protection the best security solution to i guess trying to prevent your relationship from breaking apart if you were to separate for a year well it's just like yeah like the whole everyone changes how do you keep up with that shit right and then that way you're saying that's the way of like getting through it right i I actually think i don't know it's kind of tough because i think that wouldn't be my initial goal like in a relationship Mm -hmm. if i were to like start a new relationship my initial goal wouldn't be like I end up always becoming the like my partner always ended up becoming my best friend, but we don't start out as best friends. Yeah, I don't sense. think you have to start as best friend, but, but then that, but then that like you like you said like you want to search for that, but then I feel like you don't you wouldn't necessarily or, want to because they'll become your best friend. Not okay. You'd want a partner that becomes your best friend or at oh, some okay. point is your best friend. Yeah, but I think that, or from my experience, not all your partners become your best friend. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. Like they could feel like your best friend because you're always with them and you do a lot of things together and yeah. obviously you love them and stuff like that. But upon reflection, I think that they're not all. Yeah, they're just not your best friend. Sometimes they're not actually your friend. Like how you said with some marriages, they could be your husband, but you're not. But you fucking hate each other. You guys aren't friends. If you guys weren't married, you guys would not hang out. What's what's uh? How would you define that best friend thing then? I think same way that you would. Like, if they weren't your romantic partner, they would still be a friend that you'd enjoy talking to. Because I think having a romantic partner, there's obviously things that overlap. You obviously would talk to them. You obviously find something alluring about them, attractive about them. You get sexually turned on by them and all that stuff. But I think that the parts that overlap or the parts that are more best friend-like would be you genuinely get excited to talk to them. You want to share things with them. You look forward to just hanging out with them sometimes. You want to do things with them do you have like a best friend checklist what's what 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 would this checklist have okay so for for me if if i were to say like okay someone came up to me and be like how would you define your best friend i would like i would think of like what makes my best friends different from like my good friends right Mm -hmm. um and in my checklist it would be like um so this is my personal checklist okay of what defines as a best friend and one 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 number one would probably be like um unconditional loyalty mm-hmm. so like they're always willing to help you and all this shit and you're always willing to help them right mm-hmm. uh number two would be like you're comfortable to talk about anything with them mm-hmm. uh, so you're willing to like share almost anything like there's like you're willing to share pretty much any of your secrets to them you don't have to share all your secrets to your best friend but if they were to ask you wouldn't feel uncomfortable sharing any of your secrets with them mm-hmm. um and like not just secrets but like feelings too because yeah. i feel like some feelings are so intrusive and bad it's like okay so the nice thing for example like joyce is my best friend and it's also nice because like i can tell it's like oh yes. i think that girl's pretty hot right yeah and like that's something i'm not afraid to tell her about right because she takes no offense in that right yeah um and I feel like that's like another mark of it. Right? Like mm-hmm. to any of my best friends, I'm willing to share with them any of my feelings, even how, even if they were intrusive or wrong or bad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think those two are like the major components of my best friend checklist. Like that literally separates from good friends to best friends, right? Like my good friends, I wouldn't share everything. I might share a lot with them, but there are still stuff that I'm not comfortable talking to them about. Mm-hmm. And then my best friend would be like, I'm comfortable talking to them about everything and they have unconditional loyalty both ways. I mm. think that's all I have. I can't think. Of, I'm sure if someone started talking about their checklist, I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, that one's similar to mine. But I think it's mainly just those two. I can't really think of a lot of things that, or I can't really think of a way to 
structure my list or solid points to make until you made your points. And I think that for sure I would have the same two points because I'm comparing it to the people that I define as my best friends. Yeah. All the people I define as my best friends, I have, again, okay, when I say all, I don't have like that many, okay? Okay, but like I would also have unconditional loyalty f- to them and I believe that it's, or I know that it's the same way the other way. Yeah, it's like we got to go bury this body. And yeah. I'm like what time? All right, shit. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. They're unconditional loyalty, that kind of a sort of, devotion in a way to your your relationship in that way so i think that something that separates friends and best friends is that friends you guys can obviously get along really well you obviously enjoy them as a person and all that stuff but you don't have necessarily any devotion to making your relationship better or having any not necessarily not necessarily goals in the future but you don't have many yeah, you don't have much devotion to your relationship, if that makes sense, or your friendship. Mm. Versus a best friend, I would have a little bit more devotion. So I would have to plan their birthdays in advance or I would make sure that like, oh, if they had, for me personally, if I knew that, oh, they were getting a job promotion on this day, I would yeah. put it in my calendar too because I want to do whatever I can to make this friendship like great. Mm-hmm. Or if I knew that they were they had something happening, I don't know, in their family, then because I'm also their best friend, I would try and make their life load a little bit easier in some way somehow. Like I would have some sort of, res- not responsibility, but more so like devotion to making sure like the friendship and everything stays great and that they're okay. And along with that point, I think I have another point that's like, I would want the best for them outside of the friendship regardless. And outside of what they say and vice versa. So if they were like, uh, for example, if they were a binge eater and I knew that they had a sort of diet that they needed to follow and they wanted and they got they're like, hey, Vivian, do you want to go get some cupcakes later? And I was like, Mm. no, you shouldn't because you're you have to follow this diet right now. I think as a friend, like as a regular friend, you could you still probably say you, you probably shouldn't do that. But I think a lot of people are apprehensive about doing that because they're like, oh, you might get mad at me or mm. maybe it's not in my right place. I might not be in the right place to say, oh, you shouldn't do that or kind of enforce that a little bit more. But if this is my actual best friend, then I would be like, you can get mad at me all the fuck you want, but I'm taking care of you as a person. Like, I don't give a shit if you're mad at me over that part because I know this is for your health and I know that you would appreciate this too outside of the situation type of thing or is that too intrusive I don't think so like I think obviously there's like an extent I'm using like for another example I have a I have a friend some of my friends don't like or actually like I, okay, I, my, I like half of my best friends don't like to blaze uh-huh. but then maybe sometimes when we go to parties they might get influenced to blaze or somebody uh-huh. might be like oh take a hit of this uh-huh. and they might do it but for me as a friend or me as a best friend i would never be the one to offer i would uh-huh. never like if they're like oh just get just give me your pen vid like let me just blaze i'd be like no you actually don't like doing this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna oh, I'm not gonna feed into this and you're not gonna enable it yeah i'm not gonna <sighs> enable it because i care about your well-being more than just so that part kind of that part i'm kind of conflicted on actually that's how i feel for best friends i would feel a little bit more devoted i think i I think i want the best for them outside of their desires in that way like i see the same with my parents or my sister in that way Mm. if my like my dad freaking loves to drink coke and pop and all that shit and you try to tell him not to right and i'll tell him not to and then i don't know i think that's like to an extent because I only have to, I care a lot about people, but I also obviously have a limit to my amount of care because I'm like, okay, if it makes you fucking happy, you're responsible. So whenever I see my dad buy a case of pop, I tell him, shouldn't you not be buying that? Don't you have some issues you need to worry about? Then he would be like, okay, well, it's just one day. And I'm like, okay, you know what you're do- doing. But if he were to ask me, hey, can you buy me pop on your way home? And I'm like, no. And that's how I would show that kind of <clears throat> care. I mean, I'm actually conflicted on that. I think it's a little intrusive. So, like, obviously, if my friend, my best friend has a gambling problem or something like that, or, like, an alcohol problem or something like that, that's different. I was like, 
it's a very known and obvious thing mm. and I'm gonna try to help them but at the same time like I fucking hate telling people what to do mm-hmm. so because because I hate being told what to do I also yeah. hate telling people what to do and that I, I don't know if that's an ego thing or something like that but I just like I hate trying to control other people I'm like man you you fucking do you um, in my brain I'm like people got to make the mistakes for them to learn just like I've also made mistakes right like no matter how much I tell them hey don't like fucking ride your bike without a helmet mm-hmm. it may not get through to people until they fall right and sometimes it's just like that like they just need to fall in order to learn that right mm-hmm. Um, so for me I feel like that's a little intrusive I, I just be like unless if it's something like very obvious and very like like a major thing like they just got out of AA then I'll be like okay I'm gonna try to help them not drink right mm-hmm. but outside of those like very major and obvious things I would not be that intrusive because I don't know like in my brain I'm always like it's so hard for you to try to change someone else and it's gonna create more stress for yourself the best I can do in terms of my limit of control is to inspire others but I can't like do anything else outside of that like other than that like I feel like when you start nagging people it's like it's like when you start telling someone to do something they'll always want to do the opposite like yeah. a normal human thing I, I actually don't know what that's called and i don't know if it is normal but it feels it very normal. normal yeah yeah so then i feel like that would just make it worse if i just told them what to do and then that would you know make them do the opposite even more right so then, I don't know. For me, that last part, I'm not 100% sure. But that's like your list, right? And this is my There's list. There's definitely... Right? Okay, don't get me wrong. There's definitely an extent to it. I mean, I don't think I'm a naggy person at all. Like, I could... I, like, you are... Overall, how I see it as you are an adult. Mm-hmm. You can be responsible for yourself. You know that this is bad for you. You know you shouldn't be doing it, but you're making the choice to do so. Like, I will not enable it because I know you shouldn't be... You shouldn't be doing these things. So, like... For the blazing thing, like I will never offer you my pen, or mm. I will never try and get you to blaze from it, or I will never buy you a coke because I know you shouldn't be drinking this stuff. Or if you ask me to get you coke or ask me to do these things for you, I, w- I won't do it. But if I saw you doing it, then yeah, I would probably say, Shouldn't you be doing that? But I wouldn't be like, No, no, like don't do it. Like I wouldn't go out of my way so much to prevent it unless it was an actual issue in the sense of, Oh, they just came from an AA thing, or mm. Oh, you have fucking diabetes, you shouldn't yeah. be drinking a can of coke type of thing. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't nag and be that invasive in that sense. Mm, I see. But I wouldn't be the person who will feed into it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. Versus Actually, yeah. I think friends would be the one that like, oh, take another shot, or do this. Oh, come on, peer pressure this. Like I, I because if I was their best friend, I, I wouldn't push that. I, I see what you mean. Like as a best friend, you want to be able, you want to be called out on your bullshit, and you want to be able to call them out on their bullshit, right? Mm. Uh, yeah no I, I I do see that as a thing I just feel like that was not one of my checklists at all mm-hmm. like I don't know for me a lot of my best friends like is very very chilled and I also feel like like this whole friendship thing is such a spectrum like best friends might be the top two people that you like the best but then there's like people just under there but like you can't really consider them your best friend but they're like right there they're okay. like right next to it right mm-hmm. like I may not call them if I'm like arrested but i'll definitely call them if i need help to move yeah kind of thing like that right but they're like right there next to it too but yeah no i i see the part where um yeah your partner has to kind of end up being your best friend for me that's that's what i've always thought it's like it's just the fact that i'd have to be able to be comfortable sharing everything with them uh like that's what i want best right like that's why i feel like someone who's very independent is best for me because um they would take less offense if I share certain feelings and stuff. Right. Why would they take more offense if they were dependent? Uh, because if, so if I had like a bit more of a clean girlfriend, for example, mm-hmm. then I'd be like, oh, I think that girl's really hot. Then they'll get really oh, jealous, okay. right? But if they're super independent, then they'll be like, oh, I know what my worth is and I know that's just lust mm-hmm. there, right? So yes. it's just whatever, right? Um, But yeah, no, I, I, I guess, yeah, I do agree that it's this combination of best friends and changing with your partner and all that stuff that kind of creates like a lasting relationship um but yeah for me all of this like conflict in my brain just came out from these books where it's like (laughs) i get it it's fictitious but i feel so much like relation to real life which is it is realistic to some extent yeah which is which is good like that's the author's job i feel like when you feel completely satisfied with a book, you're, the author has not done a very good job. Yeah, because you're kind of done thinking about the book, right? Yeah, but then if you're not satisfied, you think more about it and it, I don't know, makes you 
like I feel like as an author, you'd want to not just tell a story, but like help people move through life. Ooh. Like as an author, I feel like it's not just about story. It's just not that simple. Like even the fucking green caterpillar, you're like trying to teach them something, right? Some some morals or some type of value in life is what you're always trying to teach them. Which is why a lot of times in a I story, move them in some sort of way. Yeah, and most of the time the story, the protagonist is like a good person, like quote unquote good person, still, right? Mm. Um. So, yeah, I guess it would be they would not do a good job if they weren't making me think more mm-hmm. outside of the story. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that was that was kind of the tangent I want to talk about today because I'm like, man, these fucking books make me feel so sad afterwards because, you know, you root for them to have a happy ending, you know, to feel love. I feel like I'm very... Um, Are you a hopeless romantic? I don't think I'm a hopeless romantic, but I definitely... I think I've said this before. Like, I connect and I get very emotional when it comes to, like, characters of, like, shows and stories and stuff. Mm. Because um, especially, like, more... Even I now I now notice it's even more so in books than in shows because in books you're like literally reading their feelings. Yes. Whereas in shows you have to understand their feelings from facial expressions and actions and stuff like that. Whereas in the book you're literally reading like the words that they're saying, they're and thinking they in their head. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. So then I get very like I get very invested in the character. You can understand them a lot more, hey. Yeah, and then I feel like every character is just I don't know, like I I. I I wouldn't say hopeless romantic because I'm definitely not like naive. I'm very practical you're still. Ro- you're you're romantic though. Yes, very, very okay. much so. Like I do believe that shit, and especially when I read like a book and stuff, like I will. I'm definitely the type that would cry during like a sad movie and shit like that, because like I'm so invested in the story and shit. Mm-hmm. It just like makes me feel at a different level. Like when I read the story or when I watch the movie or something, I'm like thinking about you know what if that's me kind of yeah. thing like that, right? So then I relate so much to it. Whereas if it's just uh. If it's just, I don't know, real life, you just don't see that, right? I would definitely say I'm also more... I used to be a hopeless romantic for sure, but I would definitely say I'm more of a, just a romantic now. Definitely have a lot more What uh, what, what jaded you a bit? Um, Previous relationships. Nice. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Sick. Perfect answer. All right. Um, That's about all we have, I think, for this one. Is there anything mm-hmm. else specific you want to talk about, Viv? Um, Not really, no. No? Okay, yeah. I think we just went through a rant and a random shit, but... I mean, it's kind of good. It brings me some uh, closure to all these books. To your story? Oh my goodness. Well, it's just like, you know, it's, it's fucking tough, okay? Like, when you invest like two weeks to reading a book and it ends up kind of like not the way you want it, it's kind of like, oh, fuck. What the fuck? But, um... At least it's better than a shitty ending. I feel like those just ruined the entire story. Yes, but it's also better than never reading it in the first place, if that makes sense. So, like, me being upset afterwards, it's kind of like I'm actually learning True. something. I'm actually like thinking i'm not like being brainless kind of thing Mm -hmm. um i know i like to always shit on like the current generation and shit about like you know just scrolling through tiktoks and all that stuff yeah but i do think that's something i was like man when you go through that type of story not just from like netflix and shit and you actually like invest that time in it it just feels different right and then it makes you like i don't know i feel like sucked into a world for a little bit of time right yeah and then if you're actually introspective it actually kind of helps you a bit Mm -hmm. so it's kind of nice but anyways uh yeah, that's about all we have today. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Just a little, I guess, I don't know if it will feel ranty, ranty when you guys listen to it, but it's just us talking about relate. what we think. Yeah, I yeah, hope you guys relate. I mean, it's a little bit insane to our lives. So, <laughs> all right. See you guys. See you guys.